everybody, and welcome to BMB. Today we're talking with Jacob Cass, who is a brand designer at Just Creative. Uh, he has an amazing globe trying lifestyle. He has a great personal brand. He is uh, very uh, willing to share his experiences with other people. He's worked with big brands from Nintendo to smaller, uh, medium-sized businesses to help find their brand. Uh, we talk about uh, our creative processes, how we start projects, what brand means to us, work, the differences between working with big corporate clients uh, and smaller clients, what uh, lifestyle differences between this globe globe trotting lifestyle and a uh, high hustle New York lifestyle. A lot of stuff that we cover today, yeah. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy, and we'll see you on the other side of the intro. big ones, uh, Nintendo, Jerry Seinfeld. How did these relationships come about? So I used to live in New York for five years and I bounced around different agencies and I found, I got access to these big end clients through the agency. These days I'm working through my own business, um, just creative, and I work with more sm small mid-sized businesses now, uh, but that's where I got those, those jobs. Hmm. How does it compare working with the smaller business versus those big agency jobs? Well, it's a totally different experience because when you're working in an agency, you have access to smarter minds around you. You're working in teams and uh, you have bigger budgets and things like that, which is cool in its own way. But then you have um, obviously all the, the things that go with that. So it's just different. Uh, and uh, they're, yeah, they're both enjoyable. Yeah, it's it's nice when you the smaller. Uh, I have the same experience where I've had agency experience with, with big brands, but it's nice to realize um pe people's visions people are a little more appreciative when you're it's more of a personal vision when you talk to them with smaller guys yeah absolutely were you always interested in design or uh, is uh, did it come later in life for you yeah it's it's always been there it, even looking back in like kindergarten stages i've always gone towards the art side of things i've never enjoyed math or science or anything like that so it's definitely in my dna uh, in terms of design, I, I just kind of fell into it. It was a hobby. I was doing a lot of um, Photoshop editing and just creating like mock websites and morphing people's faces and things like that back when I was a teenager. And that kind of landed me into this direction of um, finding out about graphic design. And I'd never even heard of it at the time. And, and my careers advisor told me about it. And I kind of just looked into it more and, and followed that path. So uh, I'm lucky that happened. I think you owe that career advisor a little something. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you go to design school? I did. I uh, I did one or two years in high school, of just like basic graphic design course. And uh, it was more about illustration and drawing than graphic design, really. But then I went into university, uh, un the University of Newcastle in, uh, in Sydney, Australia. And I studied there for three years. And then I left and moved over to New York. Yeah. Uh, now, would you recommend someone design school if you're advising a family member like a nephew or something that want, that wanted to follow in your footsteps i i think it's possible both ways I, I it's possible it's definitely possible with all the tools online these days there's a lot of online courses in terms of design and uh, development and things like that and i i personally think that that a lot of universities struggle to keep up with the fast pace of development um all the coding languages i think design principles generally stay the same um, so yes, you can learn the basics at, at um, design school, but in terms of webs, the website of things, I think it's you can kind of keep more up to date online. Yeah, web development changes so often. I, yeah, I do find that the sort of thing that, that online courses or blogs or tutorials or whatever can't match is the uh, stuff you learn from your classmates, just being in the same uh, discipline, same environment as other people, other designers, like. You know, I learned more from the people around me than I did from my professors when I went absolutely. to school. Absolutely. And yeah, the professors, uh, they can give you tangible feedback and they can show you things and you have that one-to-one -one interaction or with your classmates and you do get that, that team um, aspect to it, whereas online courses, they, they do lack that. So there's definitely pros and cons. Uh, the monetary value of each comes into it as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, cost, the cost, I should say, yeah. uh, of online versus 
Uh, but in, in Australia, it's it's a little bit more affordable to the states uh, where it's just ludicrous. But uh, you have to keep keep that in mind. Yeah, Canada's the same way. As long as you stay pretty close to home, you're uh, you're well well funded. Um, the now you have after you finish school, you have a pretty unique story. Can you share it with us? Uh, yeah. Um, the, so I got I got offered a job uh, about six months before graduating for an agency in New York, and I said yes. I didn't have a job. I packed up my bags. I didn't know a thing about New York. I found accommodation the day before I left. I got there, um, which is really cool. Fell in love with the city straight away. I worked for this company for six months, and then they decided they didn't want me anymore. So pretty, pretty much had to um, find another job very quickly, and that you pretty much have ten days to do that before we get kicked out. So <laughs> I found a job, uh, not a different job. Ended up having to go back to Australia, sort out the visa issues, saw some lawyers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ended up coming back and working for a number of different agencies just to figure out what I want, where I wanted to work, what I wanted to do. And I found one um, at the time called Emirati, uh, which I loved. And I stayed there for four years until about three years ago when I um, decided to leave and go traveling. So uh, that's what I've been doing the past three years, just traveling and freelancing with my own design business. Nice. Um, uh, I think that, I think I want to remember hearing this story before that you sort of escaped to Canada when you had your visa issues, like why yeah. not stay in Canada? What's wrong with Canada? Yeah. So that was a, that was a different thing. I, I, um, you had to renew your visa every couple of years. So that was the second time I had, I went over, um, to Canada to get a particular visa. It got denied. Um, I wasn't allowed back in the States. My wife had to come over, um, <laughs> with all my bags from the States we just signed a lease. Uh, she's just got a new job. So we had everything. All the wheels were in motion. And, um, yeah, I couldn't get back in the States. So then I had to go back to Australia again. <laughs> um, so, But it worked out. Uh, a lot of determination, uh, seeing immigration lawyers. And I found a little loophole in terms of a particular visa that I qualified for. I could come back on that. So it nice. worked so out. You did, you did make it back uh, into the States. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so nowadays you're, you started just creative. What prompted the starting that for you? Well, I actually started just creative. It was called just creative design back in university years. And okay. at that, at that time it was kind of like a personal hobby, just recording my design process and a way to record my, um, my studies and what I learned. And I kind of shared that online and it picked up some traction. I, uh, I learned about blogging and social media and things like that, which I hadn't really, um, I didn't really know about. And that kind of opened up a whole world of things and has been really the foundation of uh, my business ever since then. And it kind of evolved from a personal blog, uh, recording my design studies to uh, a, an outlet of my portfolio and sharing articles, which I continue to do today. So uh, mm. yeah, it's, it's been consistent. Uh, I eventually rebranded from just creative design just to just creative, uh, just to shorten it and to show it's more than just design. And uh, yeah, I've gone from there. Nice. Do you differentiate that brand, like the just creative brand, from Jacob Cass brand, or is it all sort of you? It's all it's all me, and I, I don't really I don't have any employees um, except for my wife, and she's just like a an assistant really. And uh, in terms of differentiating myself all my handles are just creative and i kind of the idea behind just creative was because it was my initials jacob cass and oh, just creative yeah, um and yeah that was how i actually ended up on that name but um yeah I, I think they're the same whether or not that that changes in the future i'm not sure but right now it's definitely the same mm -hmm. the uh you mentioned your wife uh, you told me earlier that you're in london and she's in uh, africa and you guys are both working you guys can you guys tell tell me about that sort of lifestyle that it affords you this digital like roaming uh digital working lifestyle yeah so it's actually it's actually strange because we haven't been apart in like seven years for that long uh, we've always been side by side but she's she landed a she's a nanny and teacher back home and she landed this gig down in africa which was um too good to turn down and uh, she's decided to go over there i stayed in london um and we're both working and uh, tr i guess exploring still that it's not like a she's working and having a holiday at the same time kind of thing mm. um, as as i am but in terms of the lifestyle 
yeah, it's it's we originally planned to do it for one year and we did it for a year and it we found out that it was actually much more affordable to work on the road than to live in like a major city like New York, London or Sydney, where it's just ludicrous with rent and expenses. Mm-hmm. So it was actually cheaper to travel. Um, you get to see the world, you have more freedom, you don't have the boss. So there's a lot of benefits to it. And uh, we really adapted to that lifestyle and uh, we love it. So, but those things are going to come to an end because, um, or soon, well, not an end, but like on, on hold because we're having our first kid uh, in November, which we're excited for. Nice. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. We don't plan to stop entirely. Like we'll we'll nest for at least six months to to get the ropes and things and learn about uh, babies and all all that comes with it. And then if things are going well, then yeah, we can pack up and go somewhere else and um, figure out uh, probably slower term travel. I'm not mm-hmm. moving around as much, but I th- I think it's very possible. We follow a lot of um, uh, families that do the same thing uh, as well, so I don't think it's the end. No, you, you can't travel with kids. Yeah the uh, i'm a dad myself i have a three-year-old and we're I just sort of getting to the point where uh he's actually fun to have around to travel with it's uh it's good yeah you have some interaction at that age i know and they can communicate their needs which is like uh, i'm not uh, <laughs> Big win. Uh, yeah exactly um so where do you turn for inspiration Inspiration. Well, it depends on the project. Uh, I, I travel is a big inspiration, and uh, it always keeps me fresh and alive. And but in terms, in terms of inspiration, uh, there's so much on the web these days that I don't have like someone I turn to every time. It's always uh, around that project. So mm. I'll, I'll do research based on an industry or a style or whatever it is for the client, and then go from there. So it's an intensive ass place. So if you're starting a branding project, you're pretty under- confident that you understand their business. You've talked to your client quite a bit. Uh, now it's time to get started, like pen to paper or, or cursor to screen. Uh, how yep. do you start that process? Yeah, it's 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 not always the same, but I, I do find a, a similar process is like, yeah, I've had their call and all of that and got the brief. And I generally do some brainstorming in terms of mind mapping and putting keywords together. Uh, doing some initial research on other um, brands, see what's how you can differentiate your, that brand from the other brands. Um, and then I get into concepting. Sometimes I, I sketch, sometimes I go straight on the computer because I love look uh, working with type and to see what uh, feeling comes from the type. And that can often di- dictate a lot because type is such a huge part of design, as we all know. And that helps me kind of form the image in my mind. And that can ho- often dictate the logo or the website or whatever is to come. And I often use that type to see how the brand actually plays out in terms of using it for other materials because, um, yeah, you want it, the whole brand to be consistent. So that's generally how I do it. So the, the type is the foundation. The do you start straight on the computer or do you do any hand sketching uh, before? Uh, it, I do hand sketching first, but uh, I do type exhalation first uh, mm. a lot of the time just to get a feeling and get a um, I don't just get my head around the the feeling that we're going for, and then seeing how um, some creative those words like mind mapping words kind of play back into the the brand. And sometimes bringing in like a tagline or theme or overall concept uh, to work towards that often mm-hmm. helps. Yeah, I know. I think, uh, yeah, it's sort of when you're working with uh, content and presentation, sometimes you stumble upon a good piece of content that can change the whole way you want to present it. So it's it's I I, I always I, I know that it's sort of best practice to. Uh, not go to the computer straight away because you can get hung up in the details. But I do find, especially with working with type, that it's just uh, it's a challenge uh, getting uh, working. I see more opportunities when I'm on the computer than I do when I'm uh, when I'm um, sketching. Yeah, and I don't think the process is always linear, and you go back and forth. And even when I'm traveling, I don't often have the the. I'm just like on a bus or something, and where you don't have the tools available or just a bumpy or something so then the computer works so you just adapt to the situation and the project and go from there okay so your client the you've got something that you're uh pretty proud of maybe multiple things that you're pretty proud of you present one option that you're like fully confident you say go with this or do you present multiple options and let them choose something i've done that a handful of times but people like generally like seeing a couple of options uh, when I'm super confident then this is awesome and I'll just build out the whole presentation and be like um, like 
uh, like 100%, then I'll just send one. And I, I didn't often do that unless I'm like 100% because I think that it's a collaboration and the, the client's always going to have some feedback and suggestions. And it's good to compare because like one direction may be light, one may be dark, one may be modern or classic, whatever you can, or it may be a middle ground. So I think showing different options allows people to compare and you can get better feedback where, or you could just get really lucky and get a yes, like you nailed it. Mm-hmm. But um, sometimes that, that can, I don't know, just close the, the doors too quickly and which it's it's rare to get it 100 percent first go so yeah it's it's a couple of options but i try not to show too many unless uh it's they're just small changes because otherwise too many options leads to like frankenstein's frankenstein options like combining them all or yeah i don't know it's just too much no it's i mean when you're in a client meeting and you they're like oh i love this aspect of this and this aspect of this maybe we can get to put them together and you're yep. like, oh, they're they're good because they're they're yeah. different in their own right. And uh, explaining to someone is always a little tragic that they don't really go together. Yeah, because you you want to send one strong message, not two weaker messages. And that's often the the case with logo design. Is like you want to send a strong strong single message, and that's by simplifying and not having too many concepts or thoughts into into one mark, which is often what can happen if you're trying to combine marks or um so forth Mm -hmm. so we like talking about logo marks sort of the name of the game and why we as designers are so integral into the process of branding is because we can bring brand personality and brand associations uh into the thing how do you make sure that the logo mark or the brand or the website that you're working on has the personality that you and your client are going for uh, it, it depends on the on the project because I, I work in so many different industries. Like if I'm working in on a Disney project, it's going to be like or Nintendo. It's going to be bright, colorful, and it's going to have the personality there already. And it's going to be a totally different style to something with like a, a finance client where it's very corporate and clean, modern, or whatever it may be. And they're, they're just different styles. So the personality comes through depending on the industry and the project at hand. And uh, that's what I loved about working in the agency because you could have access to so many different brands. So one day you're working on finance, one day you're working on gaming, one game you're working on with like a comedian. It's like really fun. And that's what I love about being a designer. You get so many different choices and angles and uh, it's really exciting. That's cool. So uh, you can sort of cross pollinate. Absolutely. That's- that actually like brings us to the question I was going to ask you next, which uh, is like creative health. Like, do you believe in it? Do you foster, do you do things to foster your own creative health? Yeah, that's strange. You ask that. It's kind of like the work work life balance thing because in New York, I like I was saying, I was I worked in an agency, uh, but I also was running my freelance business at the same time. So it was like a lot of work, and you, there's a lot of hustle in New York, as everyone knows, and uh, that's what you just have to do. And uh, the balance wasn't there. I was, was working way too hard, but now working on the road, you, you, I, I found to be more productive. Like for the first four or five hours in the morning, I, I work then and then go out for the afternoon uh, I, and then either come back, have a coffee and start work again. But I, I find the, I don't know, the work culture, just the, the long hours in New York is very draining and it's not as productive as, as it could be. Yeah, it's tough. The, I've been fortunate that I haven't had a job that's really required the like crazy hours well, except for uh, when I was in school but the I've heard that just creativity is a, is different and I don't define just design as creative I, I think sales can be creative I think management can be creative mm-hmm. but when you try to ram someone into a uh, like 12 hour work day uh, and force them into tight timelines and stuff it just doesn't lend itself to the best work yeah I, I i get the reason why it's done that way and um it's not always hard to it's it is hard to change that that culture um uh, it's just what i aspire to is, is different to that okay cool so do you have any uh advice to fellow designers trying to fight the good fight trying to uh get into the lifestyle trying to uh like what's your best advice for someone that's in your shoes yeah, I, I often get asked, like, how do you work and travel and find time to do everything? And the, the biggest thing is, um, oh, no, how do you afford to travel, I should say, is the biggest question I get. And the thing is that it is cheaper to, to travel and work on the road. And 
uh, I wouldn't start in in rich countries like Europe or North America or Australia or places like that. Go somewhere where um, the cost of living is much more affordable and you can branch out from there. Like Southeast Asia is a good example. You can um, put up shop and set up shop in in Thailand, for example, or any anywhere there, and it's much more affordable. You can live like a king. Um, great food, great people, just got great culture, and then you can explore Southeast Asia. And then as your business evolves and you get more money, you can go to, go to new countries and you have more experience by that stage. So it's kind of an evolution of, of going. You just have to start um, places you can afford and places you want to be. So that would be my advice. Uh, when we started, we actually started in Europe. We saved money to do Europe first because we just wanted to see it, get it out of the way. And uh, we spent a lot of money there. Uh, <laughs> drinking is a big thing <laughs> uh, when I was a bit younger. Um, but it was a big, big expense. And um, it was much more affordable being in, in places like Southeast Asia where you could uh, stay in a place longer, experience it uh, better, and really get ingrained in the culture. Whereas... Um, I don't know. I, I just found Europe to be a little bit more taxing because you have these more, like more overheads, and it's kind of got to you a bit more when you're paying like uh, fifty to seventy euro for a, a night, and you you want you you're working or you're seeing the place. Like it's just I don't know. It just puts you in a different mindset. Um, mm-hmm. it, it depends on what you can afford, really. Uh, so, yeah. If somebody wants a resource to sort of look into this thing. I, I read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss a yeah. long time ago, uh, which touches on this a bit, but also uh, the sort of mindset around um, when you sit down to do work, making sure that you're working on the stuff that matters and not superfluous mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, and he also goes into uh, what to look for when you're sort of setting up shop in uh, these foreign countries. Yeah, and that that is a great book. And there's another one by Nomadic Matt. Um, he's a, a big travel uh, in, influencer and blogger, and he has a book on how to travel the world on 50 bucks a day. So if you if you're new to traveling uh, and want to know how it's done, that was a great resource as well as that four hour work week. I think that the four hour work week is a big exaggeration, um, but it is a great goal to aspire to and uh, look. For, for the average person I think it is, but it's a great goal to aspire to and uh, I don't know it just puts it into perspective yeah 50 dollars a day is a is a good number because like you kind of think that even a someone with an entry level as long as they can find the clients like that's a couple hours of work and you have your uh, travel covered for uh, and then you just what you can uh, the work you can find beyond that is just gravy yeah, and uh, I think a good way to think about it is like what where you're living now. What are your overheads? Like every day you're going to be paying rent, and like wherever you are, and you're always going to be eating, and you always have these overheads. It's just if you think about the place, uh, a different place. Like what is that cost going to be, and what what's doable for your current income, and you can work out a goal and go from there as well. Okay, well I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, and if people want to reach out to you or connect to you on social media, where should they go? Uh, my website, justcreative.com, is, has all my links. Um, most of my handles are just creative, um, and you'll find me there, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and so forth. Okay, thanks, and uh, hopefully have you back uh, soon. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate it. Wow, that was a ride. Uh, very interesting guy. Very interesting to hear how his lifestyle of uh, living on $50 a day in these interesting countries uh, uh, affects his design work and uh, what he can offer his clients in terms of really inspired, interesting work. Uh, I encourage you to go to his website, Just Creative, and uh, look at his work. It's super, super uh, intriguing. I can see where it's coming from now that we've uh, had some time to chat. If you like this podcast, uh, you there's a lot of ways you can support it. Uh, the best way is to share and uh, like it uh, wherever you're seeing this. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, if uh, you want to hear more about this, you can subscribe to us uh, on Twitter or Facebook or wherever we'll announce uh, when we have new content. And yeah, just uh, engage, like ask me some questions. I want to hear from you. Who do you want to hear from next? Who do you want me to reach out to? 
I'm, I'm open. Uh, let's, uh, yeah. And so head over to Brand Marketing Blog and, uh, yeah, let's connect.